Here are some notes to get you started using the online programming environment that we're going to need for the science modeling group. So we're going to be using a Linux command shell and you don't actually have to install Linux on your computer. Uh, as I say, it's going to be all done through the Replit website. The shell we're using is called bash, B-A-S-H, and we actually only need a handful of commands, three or four commands from bash. The first one is listing the files that are there. LS lists the files and folders. So here we have one, two, three, four, we've got six folders, and those are called directories in Linux, and we've got one file. So in comparison with what you would see in a graphical program, such as a file manager, then the folders appear and you can go into the folders and you can see the files. Just the same idea that we have in the text system. So I can see those folders, but if I want to change into one of the subfolders, I need to use a new command, which is change directory. And I give the name of the folder. So I want to go into the project one introduction. Instead of typing it all in, I can use tab completion. I press the tab key, which is on the left of the letter Q, and it partially completes the word project. Of course, there's a few projects, so I tell it I need project one, press the tab key again, press enter. And at this point, I now have a different listing of files there, which corresponds to the files inside that directory. The list command has a few different options and options are accessed by using a minus symbol and then listing the options. So the A option lists hidden files. This one doesn't have any hidden files. And then the L option gives a longer list with more details, including the file sizes and bytes. And then the H option added to that turns the file sizes into kilobytes, which is quite useful. You can combine them all and that gives you all of the files in more detail. If you want to clear the clutter out of the way, you can just type in reset. If you lose track of which folder you're currently in, which directory, you can use the command pwd. If you want to type in a previous command, you can use the up arrow, and just by repeatedly pressing the up arrow, it goes through your command history, your bash history. Down arrow plays forward. And obviously, just to enter one of those, just press the enter key. So that's a few bash commands. The next one is not actually a bash command, but it's a Python program. And we're going to use the Python programming language to write all of our stuff. And you need to be in version three. So just check that you're running version three, Python minus, minus V should be version three. If it's not, you'll need to upgrade. So I could run one of these Python programs, such as project one A partial and that will give an error because it's only partially complete. What your job is is to correct the parts of the program that are missing and make it into a complete program which should then run and produce something sensible like that one there. In order to edit the files you're going to use another piece of software which is called Vim and we can run Vim just by typing its name and then when it comes to be time to leave Vim you have to exit it, there's an instruction there, colon, Q, enter for quit. To use Vim to edit a program that already exists, the easiest way is to just supply the name of the program on the command line. So we can open a partially completed file and then we can edit it. And we'll show you how to do that in another video.